Hi there. Well, thank you very much for joining me. My name is David Wood, and uh, I'm very happy to be presenting our paper at middle this year, titled Automatic Labeling Using Detention Model for Radiology Reports of MRI Scans, or ALARM. And this work is all about enabling researchers to label hospital-scale neuroradiology imaging data sets for deep learning applications uh, by deriving image labels from free text radiology reports using natural language processing. Uh, now, before I start, let me quickly acknowledge our wonderful team. Uh, in particular, I'd like to mention Jeremy Lynch, Sina Kafiabadi, Emily Guillaume, and Aisha Albusebi, who lead our clinical team, as well as James Cole and Thomas Booth, who are the lab leaders and PIs of the project. Right, so I'll start with a quick background. Now, a rate limiting step to the development of real world clinical deep learning applications is the difficulty of actually obtaining sufficiently large labeled data sets for model training. Now, the trouble is that retrospective hospital imaging data is very rarely stored in a manner that's suitable for machine learning, i.e. with associated categorical labels. And assigning these labels requires considerable domain knowledge and experience. Now, even for expert neuroradiologists, manual labeling is an incredibly laborious task. In our experience, it takes clinicians up to half an hour per examination to label images into the sort of granular categories that you might actually want a downstream classifier to incorporate. Uh, for example, mass or acute stroke or vascular abnormality and so on. So you're gonna be waiting probably a few years to generate data sets of even a few thousand labeled scans um, in this way. Now, a promising alternative approach is, is to, excuse me, instead automate this task by instead deriving labels from radiology reports using natural language processing and then to assign these labels to the corresponding scans without having to ever actually manually inspect each image. Now, of course, this assumes that radiology reports faithfully reflect the contents of images, uh, and you can read about the extent to which that's true in our follow-up work, which I've linked in the bottom right here. But basically, it's a very attractive idea because you know, it allows huge collections of archived images, um, in our case, over 100,000 MRI scans, to be labeled you know, practically instantaneously once your model has been trained. Now, this isn't a particularly new idea, and in fact, NLP has been used in this way to label head CT data sets um, from radiology reports before using fairly basic NLP techniques like bag of words and n-gram models. Um, but until now, there's been no demonstration of this for MRI data. And we put this down to the greater um, sort of complexity of MRI reports, which follows from the sort of superior soft tissue contrast of MRI as compared to CT. Um, which allows a more detailed description of abnormalities. And uh, to give you sort of some idea of this, uh, given a couple of examples here of radiology reports from our data set, um, there are a couple of things that you may notice. Firstly, you see the reports read almost like a play-by-play -play commentary, listing various abnormalities um, which aren't present. For example, in the top report, you see that you know, it says, no focus of restricted diffusion indicate, as, as demonstrated to indicate an acute impact. There's no mass, there's no evidence of vascular malformation, uh, and so on. Now the trouble with this is that, you know, when you compare it to the bottom report, which does actually describe an abnormal examination, in this case, an acute impact, you see that the language used to describe the presence of an abnormality is very similar to that used to rule it out or to describe its absence, um, which of course is very unhelpful uh, for the perspective of NLP, and it means that classical approaches involving n-grams or word frequencies or even regular expressions are likely to fail. Now, it's also common uh, to see normal reports, like the top um, report here, which mention the presence of various findings, which are then, a few sentences later, deemed ultimately to be clinically insignificant. And you also see abnormal reports, like the bottom one here, which refer only to disease progress relative to some previous study uh, without actually describing the under, underlying abnormality in any particular detail. So all this is basically to say that, you know, you're going to have to have a pretty sophisticated language model in order to perform this labeling task. And, you know, in addition, it's going to have to be trained on fairly small numbers of labeled reports because, of course, if you have to get a team of radiologists to sit down for a year and label tens of thousands of reports in order just to train a labeling model, then you know you could argue that you really should have just gotten to label the image directly, the images directly, excuse me, uh, in that time. So what's our answer? Well, rather than training a model from scratch, we instead fine tune and build upon BioBird, 
which is a transformer-based biomedical language model, which has been pre-trained on huge collections of, of text, totaling more than 20 billion words, um, including most of English Wikipedia, uh, as well as all PubMed abstracts and full text articles. And by initializing our model with these pre-trained weights, we inherit a considerable degree of low-level language comprehension, um, meaning that you know, far fewer labeled examples are actually necessary for training our particular classifier, which of course is exactly what we wanted. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with it, Firebird straight out of you know, the box basically takes as its input a piece of text uh, in the form of a list of integer word IDs, and it outputs contextualized embeddings uh, or embedding vectors for each of these words. And there are several ways that you can use the output of transformer-based models like Firebird for classification. Now you can use the, you know, the classification token, unsurprisingly, known as the CLS token, uh, which in some ways has been designed to be a good general vector representation of the entire text. Um, or you can use various aggregations of the individual word embeddings. Um, for example, you know, just summing them all together, like I show here, or perhaps taking, taking the argmax and, and so on. But we found actually that incorporating an additional attention module, which we parameterized by a simple feed forward neural network, um, which learns to weight the contribution of each word by its context dependent importance, uh, actually leads to improved classification accuracy and also provides the model with some interpretability, um, which I expand upon later. So our model takes this weighted sum of embeddings, which, uh, which, basically is, which basically becomes the vector representation of the radiology report. And it's passed to a three layer classification network, which ultimately outputs the probability that the report is describing one or more of the various abnormality categories, um, you know, which I'm, I'm about to discuss. And we train the whole network. So that's the classifier, the attention network, the, you know, the custom attention aggregation network, as well as BioBert end-to-end -end, um, on the basis of binary cross-entropy loss between you know, the model predictions and the report labels. So onto the data that we used. In order to train the model, we obviously, of course, needed a set of labeled reference standard reports. And for this, we obtained over 120,000 radiology reports, as well as the corresponding images. And this consisted of all adult MRI head examinations from King's College Hospital London, which were performed over a 10-year period. And from this, we randomly selected 3,000 reports for labeling uh, by our team of neuroradiologists. Of these, 1,000 reports were labeled for the presence or absence of each of five clinically relevant categories of abnormality. So those were mass, vascular abnormality, damage, acute stroke, and phasicast small vessel disease. And in addition to this, 2,000 reports were labeled for the presence or absence of any, ab any abnormality. And this is as defined by our team, which uh, worked hard over the course of six months to design an exhaustive list of abnormalities, which would be desirable for you know, an automated triage system to capture. And we provide that list as an appendix uh, in the paper as well. So how does the model do? Well, shown here are the results for the binary classification task. And that, so that's to determine whether a, a given report describes a normal or an abnormal examination. And as you can see, the, the model does very well. It outperforms uh, you know, the various baselines, uh, which you can read about in the paper. Uh, now you may think that you know, these high numbers, I mean, the model gets over 99% accurate and, with, and same with the sensitivity and specificity. You may think these high numbers suggest, you know, perhaps this is just a, a relatively straightforward task, but have a look at the bottom row, which gives the classification performance of a hospital doctor with 10 years of experience as a neurologist and stroke physician, and who we also trained over the course of six months to actually label radiology reports. Uh, and remember also that you know, in a lot of countries, and in the UK included, it's, it's actually part of the job of a neurologist to interpret radiology reports during face-to-face -face patient consultation. So, you know, the fact that this physician scores relatively poorly and that our model considerably outperforms um, them is, you know, we, we think is very encouraging indeed. As for the granular classification, uh, you know, here are the results and, and, and you can see that uh, as a comparison in this case, we've included the performance uh, of a blinded neuroradiologist this time, uh, who also labeled the same reports. 
and you can see you can see again basically that you know the model performs very well even on this more difficult task which you know is very encouraging and in fact it's only slightly inferior to the neuroradiologist and it's, it's practically comparable in performance so you know on the basis of these very strong results we're, we're very confident that our model alarm can assign binary as well as more granular categorical labels to radiology reports um, with almost no loss of accuracy compared to having you know an expert human perform this task however an important question which we didn't actually explore in the current work um, is how does labeling examinations on the basis of reports like we've done here compare to actually you know manually inspecting the images like this is the, the gold standard and in the paper which i linked before and in case you missed it i'll, I'll provide it here again out so in, in, in our follow-up work our team of neuroradiologists actually explore this question they explore the agreement between reports and image findings and uh, you know hopefully you'll go and read it but basically we've found that reports can generally speaking be very accurately used to assign labels to images so as such, we went ahead and labeled the remaining 115,000 images, uh, which we had reports for uh, using Alarm. And, uh, you know, this actually took less than half an hour to complete, which, of course, is overwhelmingly faster than, you know, what you'd get with manual image labeling. Right. So before finishing, I'd like to highlight two more features of our model. Uh, first is model interpretability. Right. So in addition to improving the actual performance, the custom attention module, which I um, um, introduced previously, and which was uh, you know, introduced, in fact, to aggregate individual word embeddings, actually, in addition, provides a nice form of model interpretability. Uh, you know, of course, this is a little bit of a subtle subject, and we don't want to claim too much, but you know, it's certainly encouraging, we think, that the model is putting lots of weight on words which do seem to carry you know, a lot of information. For example, in the abnormal report shown above, the expression there is an acute cortical infarct uh, is given you know pretty strong weighting as are the words remainder and normal which you know seems about right and this is the same for the normal study below where the expression normal intracranial appearances seems to dominate uh, while the negations which rule out infarction uh, also contribute quite strongly uh, now of course this needs further study uh, and was outside the scope of the present work. But it's possible that you know, a mechanism of this kind could help engender confidence in the model predictions, especially for clinicians. Uh, and you know, we think it's quite, um, excuse me, quite a nice feature. Now, finally, we found that once we'd actually labeled our 120,000 odd MRI scans using, or reports at least, and, and images using our binary classifier, that is, you know, the classifier that tells you whether a report describes a normal or an abnormal examination. When we looked at the visualizations, the low dimensional visualizations of the embeddings for all the reports which were predicted to be abnormal, we saw something interesting. We saw pathology dependent clusters. Now, what I mean by this is that there were, for example, groups of embeddings which, when we check the corresponding reports, all referred to the same underlying abnormality, for example, Alzheimer's disease or perhaps high-grade gliomas. So to exploit this, we made a web-based annotation tool, and we make this available online to other researchers, which allows us to lasso all the reports from a cluster and write their accession numbers, which are basically just the unique exam identifiers, uh, to disk along with a particular, you know, that the particular label. So this allows a sort of form of semi-supervised learning whereby we you know, you identify clusters visually, you inspect a handful of reports from the cluster to determine what the common pathology is. It's normally very straightforward. And then you, with the mouse, you loop around the cluster and then that downloads the entire collection of those examinations uh, uh, locally, which, is, uh, which we think is very nice. And to demonstrate this, I've shown an example here of a high-grade gloom, a data set, generated uh, in this way. Right, so in conclusion, we have introduced uh, for the first time a dedicated neuroradiology report classifier, which can be used to assign labels to images uh, for deep learning applications. And the classification performance of the model exceeds that of an experienced neurologist and is comparable to that of a experienced neuroradiologist, demonstrating we think the feasibility of our approach 
Uh, and in this way, we've been able to label over 120,000 images in ha under half an hour, which of course is a considerable improvement on uh, manual labeling. And with that, I thank you very much for watching and I'll look forward to answering any questions that you may have. Cheers.